now a word from our round five sponsor. Hey, yo, Don, I'm a Robbie. You want me to tell them about the bazaar or do you want me to use the clamps, huh? Relax, Cap Dean. These are our customers and we are the merchants. It's okay, I'll handle it. You, I know your problems and I got the goods to fix them. You watch an OP deck tech and need to buy the spice. Buy it from the bazaar. You are deep into theory crafting the next hottest deck. Buy it from the bazaar. You are changing your Pro Tour deck list last minute. Buy it from the bazaar. You follow the meta and need to change decks. Buy from the bazaar. You have an addiction to box breaks. Buy from the bazaar. You find yourself dealing fab to new customers. Yes, catch me outside and I'll hook you up. And you, don't forget, get your cards from me, Hammurabi TCG. Or else you get the clamps. Welcome back to Battle Hard in Richmond. We are on round five. I am Patrick Shaw from Off the Rails TCG. On the call with me is Frank Hung. Frank, how you doing? I'm doing great and uh, excited to dive into this game here. We've got Dromai playing against Bravo Showstopper and Jody on Dromai and Thomas on Bravo. Yeah, uh, Tom Coleman, a, a, a tavern brawler, good friend of mine, upstart goblin, T. Uh, you know him on online uh, on those monikers uh, has been uh, uh, kind of a hardcore Bravo player as of late. Uh, and we just saw the key cards into the matchup for Bravo. Arouse the Ancients, uh, being able to get that tempo, kill kill some dragons. And, and uh, uh, you know, get that go again is so important for Bravo. And we saw Spinal Crush as well. Uh, there's so many non-attacks coming in uh, with Dromai. If if, uh, if T can land one of those Spinal Crushes and, and get that crush effect, uh, you know, that really hinders uh, what Jody is likely here to do uh, on Dromai. Yeah, and on the other side of the board, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of it is going to be tight navigating around these crush effects from Jody's side, but also trying to build up a board of both Ash, uh, Ash Wings and Dragons, and also potentially a ghostly touch uh, with the high density of poppers that uh, Bravo is likely to have. Huh. Now, there's a, there's always a lot of talk about uh, the Dromai Oldham matchup. What are what are the differences between Oldham and Bravo uh, as Dromai? Is this is this like as hopeless, you know, as as people seem to call it as in uh, the as Oldham is, um, or does Bravo present a, a different, maybe more palatable challenge uh, for Dromai? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I think that Bravo might actually have certain cards that make it trickier for the Dromai to navigate. Uh, I don't think that any illusionist players are actually super super excited to see uh, uh, the Guardians right now in the metagame. But that's my limited understanding of it. And right here, we're seeing a, a pummel being used on turn zero just to push damage on top of the blocks. Uh, Jody blocking with. Uh, Two, three blocks to clean block Anathos, but uh, sneaking in there for four. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's those little, uh, you know, those little in incremental uh, uh, value uh, moves that, uh, you know, Bravo needs to do. Still is able to arsenal a card on turn zero, draw up, and uh, we see Jody with the Sigil of Solace recovering some of that lost life here. Yeah, and we bet he really would have rather had that last turn. It must have been one of the two cards he drew to replace uh, the two dragons, because then he could have actually played it out on turn zero after taking the hit from Pummel, and also pitched the last card to generate uh, some ash there. Uh, looks like right here he's uh, he showed us a, a peak of that remembrance uh, in his hand, but it's also a bit of an awkward spot. Uh, looks like he's just going to generate an ash to furnace and then immediately use it to play out a necria, which will generate ash uh, in in through the the next couple turns while bravo takes it out we see the surging uh <coughs> seismic surge pop Ooh, we see a seismic surge generated bravo activated for dominate into a dominated crippling crush uh doesn't look like he's got anything floating but he does have one left 
uh, in hand. Uh, hey, you know, uh, there have been uh, weaker turn uh, turn twos, I guess, uh, than than this. This is a pretty good, uh, pretty good opening salvo. Yeah, and on Jody's side, we're seeing a couple of passing garages, which I guess are cards that he's kind of uh, not too unhappy to block with, uh, because the, you know. Or sorry, not not too unhappy to lose right now, just because they're not going to do anything until much later in the game. But also being forced to use uh, equipment here uh, just to prevent the crush effect is uh, pretty brutal, I would say. Yeah, get, the Crown of Providence is is out very early. Uh, the furnace now has only got the got the one block on there. And there's a bit of a glare spot, but I do believe that's Mage Master Boots uh, in in Jody's uh, foot place. Uh, we'll do for the there's been a lot of a uh, I guess is that generally is, do you think that there's a Toma Findel floating around in there somewhere yeah, we're seeing a dragon and a passing mirage that are uh, going into the graveyard off the crush effect so Jody giving up two armor pieces there and still getting out the crush because he only was able to block for seven a uh, uh, pretty rough spot for him to be there to be honest and Jody's left with a burn them all uh, in hand. Uh, Necria is still on the board. Jody uh, just moves to Arsenal it and draw up. Uh, T back on uh, back on the offensive here as Bravo the seismic surge pops. He's got uh, he's got a full he's got a full grip. Pitches a blue active does the seismic surge activates Bravo and dominates in a spinal crush pitching the rest of his hand two blues One, two, three, four, we're doing the math five. he does have two floating after that One, two, three. Yeah. and then four. Oh, you have two so four. that's seven two so two four. yeah make sure we're representing the game state correctly and uh you know make sure that uh jody's at least got to think about a pummel follow-up here but at the same time it's like when you're dominating uh, an attack it's very very hard for the opponent to even uh consider that side of things and seeing Jody. an oasis respite come out here uh you're gonna be targeting the spinal crush here I'm wondering if we're considering uh putting down an extra card in front of that as well uh, just to prevent the life totals from getting too out of control and uh, thinking about the card that he wants to pitch right now it's like that was a rake the embers. He does get the full value out of it, gaining the life going up to 36, uh, preventing four of nine. So still five, uh, five coming in. Uh, a card down would stop the crush effect. Oh, and now we're seeing the promo and made for scene. Jody with the... Everybody I've played against today yeah. been like, what the, the flex, <laughs> the flex defense here. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see uh, if this pummel. See, uh, uh, Thomas appreciating that. Going to bottom. Okay. And we uh, looks like uh, the fate resolves. There's the opt, and I think it's just gonna take the one. It looks like going back down to 35, netting zero from the oasis. Yeah, no, uh, no pummel on that, uh, that, that attack there. Uh, Necria is still on the board, just chilling. Uh, that that is still the burn them all there. Uh, Jody does not look like uh, he doesn't have a bunch of cards to play with here. So it looks like he's going to. He's thinking. Attacks with Necria is defended and destroyed. Jody draws up. Coleman back on the Seismic Surge pops. He generates another Seismic Surge. Follows up with the Anathos for six. Right, compared to the rest of his turns, this one's a little, uh, you know, a little dull. A little, a little gentlemanly. Yeah, and this will give Jody a bit of breathing room to uh, continue establishing the Ash on the board. Uh, the unfortunate part with the earlier turns was that even though... He was taking some of this damage over the top and having those on hits impact him. He wasn't even able to leverage that into any ash. So uh, not the spot that you really, really want to be as uh, as the draw my player. And now opting a card to the bottom here, taking just two damage, uh, running out this defense reaction. 
Uh, Jody's Jody's deck featuring uh, you know seemingly a, a lot of defensive uh, defensive cards. Uh, you know we've, we've seen the deck list. There is a there is a bunch of dragons in there as well. But do you think this is this might be leaning towards what he, I guess, would want to be doing? Yeah, and I think uh, it's tricky because you still need to be able to create a board against uh, Bravo. But at the same time, you know they've got so many poppers that it can be uh, really really tricky to actually get you know positive value off of them. And uh, having the defense reactions kind of helps make sure you get to the end game, but also you know can have this conflict of too many defensive cards versus offensive cards in certain hands, right? And uh, absolutely. And there we see the sweeping blow, the three with go again, uh, the Kyloria coming out, and Cranial Crush used to pop for Phantasm, uh, taking out the Kyloria. And that will end it for Jody, who draws up a bunch of red cards. Uh, Sizu Surge pops on Coleman's side. We see the Zealous Belting, the Debilitate in Arsenal gives the Zealous Belting go again. So this will be coming in for five go again. Jody's got the sink below that he is reacting with right now. Looks like a Command and Conquer, I think, uh, which I believe he just sunk. Uh, so now he's got some thinking to do. Uh, he's going to take 1 to 32. We have a, a Sigil instead of a Serakai and another Command and Conquer in his hand. Coleman with a Command and Conquer of his, uh, of his own threatening Jody's arsenal. And Jody's just going to give uh, 6 defense here. Protect the arsenal and uh, more importantly his life total I think. Yep, and adding to that is the sigil, adding three, going back up to 35. Uh, being able to hover around that 35 mark, uh, 35 life mark coming into turn four, uh, despite uh, T's uh, very impressive offensive showing uh, to this point. Only with the Rouse, the Ancients revealing a crippling crush and a blue choke slam for uh, a 17 power, I believe that is the case. I mean, for seven go again is the rousing. Yeah, and this we know is tough for Jody because he wants to block some of this damage, but you know, if he t lets his foot off the gas a little bit too much, then that crippling crush is gonna be coming his way pretty quick. Yeah, the specter of it is gonna be there. He doesn't have enough to play it now, so we know that that Anathos is going to be the follow-up for six. A 13 damage turn, and the Crippling Crush will be in Arsenal. Oasis Respite uh, being played against the Anathos. Looks like he'll take two. Lose, uh, gain one, take two, net one loss to 34. Yeah, and also getting an Ash uh, off of that trade. So not, uh, not ideal necessarily, but also still working towards that game plan, right? Absolutely. And Coleman activating the showstopper and firing off the crippling crush, pitching a blue pummel to start. Another blue pummel and a showtime for 11 dominated. You know, uh, Frank, there's a there's a lot of talk that Bravo showstopper doesn't have a hero text, but I think uh, a Coleman making that giving that dominate a lot of a lot of a lot of action uh here uh in round five yeah for sure i think this is maybe like the fourth or fifth bravo activation we've seen and uh you know it's helped push through at least a bit of damage and some on hits each time so you know uh sometimes it's uh a, a, a bit of a trap to keep extra cards to activate the hero ability and uh sometimes you just draw into these sequences where you're uh you know, laying the beat down on your opponent, as it were. Jody was thinking about the Oasis respite. Uh, is is going to commit the flame scale furnace uh, with one block and the and the Oasis preventing four. He pitches a Necria, gains an Ash in the process. That's three, four, seven, eight total. Flame scale furnace is now out of the equation. Yeah. Oh, and then before the combat chain is closed, activates the last possible gasp of that flamescale furnace to just get him one more ash. 
I think that was a, uh, if, I, if I saw that correctly, I think that was a blue, uh, it was kind of stuck at three, just cycling through his hand. Uh, Coleman returning with another Zelf belting. Just the pressure is relentless here. Five go again, pitching the cranial crush, uh, floating one. Uh, Coleman looks like he's got, is that another crippling crush in his hand? No, I see Showtime. That's what I'm looking at. They are both cards that feature Bravo. That is true. The the, the Aria boulders, uh, uh, borders. Oh, we see the pummel. You always pummeling the zealous belting, giving it uh, plus four to nine. And yeah, I think we're holding this dice upside down, but we will take that upside down uh, six into nine. <laughs> it is, it's nine to somebody. Yeah, particularly me right now. We see the sand cover coming in. Is that the uh, is that the Ward 4 uh, Ash 1? That's a, a some spicy uh, uh, Dromite tech that escapes me. And Jody forced the discard off the pommel here. Yep, and, uh, and that's one of those uh, that's one of those special dusts there. Uh, special Ashes. And still has the deal with the 6. Gives up the yep, last card in hand. Pouring it on. Uh, Jody going down to 30, it looks like. 37 to 30. Here, round five of the Battle Hard in Richmond. Jody Burney, 4 0 versus Thomas Coleman, 3 1. This round is brought to you by Hammurabi TCG. Go check them out. Yeah. Coleman's up. Seismic Surge is breaking. He's got four cards in hand, but no arsenal. Shows off the new surge, uh, Seismic Surge that he is generating, pitching the Buckling Blow, floating two. Red Choke Slam that comes in for eight, costs four, pitches a blue, still floating two. Now Jody's going to check for those two red pummels that he's sure has already been playing in the graveyard. <laughs> and you can tell, it's like, how many pummels do you have exactly here? Yeah, we see some pretty decent cards in uh, in his hand here, but it looks like they're all going to go towards the block. And that's nine block being presented. Coleman thinking. The very least giving the... Uh, Given the little little showmanship on whether or not to to pummel it or not. Yeah, and we know that Jody's got a sigil of solace in in his hand, so at least uh, he'll gain three if this pummel goes over the top. Oh, uh, remembrance. remembrance. <laughs> and he still sigils. Uh, so plus three, going back to thirty. Coleman's going to be shuffling some actions back into his deck here. That's very interesting here because, uh, you know, we, we, we're just getting into like such a long game at this point that I wonder what Thomas is like really prioritizing off this remembrance. Like, is it just red threats, you think? <sighs> it does, I, I think he's just going for, right, just poppers and, and uh, you know, the, the stuff that worked for him. Right? He, he found a blue debilitate, the crippling crush and the command and conquer. Uh, I think all three of those cards represent exactly what his game plan has been. Uh, for this game, and he's just looking to continue on uh, with those, you know, with those deep threats and uh, keeping that blue in there uh, to just keep that, you know, keep keep these turns flowing as well as they have been. Thank you, good sir. Mm -hmm, yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, maybe maybe before uh, he even gets to the bottom half of the deck and starts being more blue dense, you know, he's just going to have Jody so low on life that uh, he'll be able to close it out. Yeah, he does have, uh, Jody has only touched uh, the 20s once he, he sigiled back up to 30. Uh, but, you know, as as relentless as Thomas has been, it is it is still a tough nut to crack here. And, and Jody, he's trying, though. We see the Rouse the Ancients, a Thunderquake and a Command and Conquer showing 14, uh, I believe, to give the Rouse the Ancients 7 and go again. Yeah, not really giving Jody any breathing room to try to do anything here. Uh, you know, just forcing a lot of uh, a lot of blocks. Yep, Jody putting down uh, two, three blocks, blocking six. Oh, and we see a time snap potion. I just, I just saw that. The time snap. 
that is a little bit risky because if I mean not that I think it's gonna happen, but if uh, oh maybe it is. I was gonna say if uh, the CNC gets played out here, he's not gonna have a blocking card. Gonna have to give up that burn them all that was tucked away in the arsenal. Might have actually worked against him in a few spots where he would have preferred the arsenal defense reaction, but now he's free of it. Yep, time snap comes out, uh, and uh, he just draws and says go, and we're we're back on the Bravo show here. Seismic surge pops. Coleman thinking about his uh, his hand here. Can't quite see what he's got going on. That is the buckling blow being pitched. It's a blue seismic surge being created. Bravo showstopper is being activated. Whatever's coming in is dominated. A blue crush the weak. So a bit of a weaker turn from Bravo, but uh, you know, still conserving the seismic surge for next turn. And uh, you, you know, I think that he's he's just trying to keep up the pressure here. Base three, so like sweepings. Yeah, still still forcing a, a one card block will leak some damage. He does have a card uh, that he'll be able to arsenal here. Uh, again, uh, one of the you know one of the gentler turns that he's had, uh, but still still a lot of action uh, going on there. He will get the arsenal, and have oh maybe not. He will not arsenal that card. Yeah, I guess it must have been a worse blue than uh, uh, the crush the week. Okay. And Jody playing out a great sequence uh, to kind of turn the corner from this, uh, playing a mirror guy and then a Vincerakai. So this Vincerakai is going to be able to attack without Phantasm. And uh, that'll be tough for Thomas to deal with on the crackback, especially knowing that, you know, he's played out quite a few of those uh, uh, zealous beltings. He won't be able to easily clear both of these dragons in one turn, it looks like. Yep, and uh, zealous belting is as well as rouses. Uh, had, I believe we've seen two of each uh, to this point. And Thomas so, says, take nine. Six off of Vincerakai and then three Arcane. Uh, Jody not going to be attacking with the mirror guy on the follow-up. Yep, smart move there. And there's the oh, third there's zealous the belting. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That is that is quite funny. It's a it's nine life to be able to make that play, but uh, you know, when he when he's got the zealous belting, that's what you got to do. And Jody quite animated here as they're talking. Uh, uh, both of them having having a good time here at the Battle Heart in Richmond. Uh, Jody <laughs> Jody a bit incredulous about about it seems like the round as it's been. Uh, the zealous belting still coming in for go again, so it does look like Thomas will have the ability to clear out the Vincerakai as well. And uh, you know, just just as much momentum as Jody established, it does look like uh, Coleman will be able to respond in kind. We see the seismic surge being generated uh, over there, and. Yeah, and He's I think thinking about it. Thomas is thinking about going face here. He's like, I bet you won't just draw a mirror guy. But uh, that that looks like it's pointed at Vincerakai to me. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> no, no, no. I said the finger pointing going to two face. Jody going, all right. Uh, taking the two, uh, choosing not to sink a card in the okay. process. And Jody is about to get yeah. the is that, is that Optimi? Oh, I think that's Dominia actually. Yeah. Dominia? Oh, uh, I, you know, I thought it was, and uh, okay. I couldn't quite read it. Yes, uh, Dominia coming out. We're showing a whole lot of poppers uh, here. We have two blues and two reds. Looks like a red crush the week and command conquer. Well, as a blue choke slam and a thunderquake. The red choke slam is what is banished. Two blues and red left in Thomas's hand. He does have the card in Arsenal. And top goes Dominia with the Command and Conquer being used there. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, not unlikely for Thomas to have so many poppers, but also, you know, when you're Jody playing the Dominia, you are a bit sad to see that happen. <laughs> And look at this follow-up. <laughs> Jody is especially sad to see the crippling crush coming in to follow. Seismic surge uh, with the as the discount, so uh, Thomas able to just cleanly pitch two blues to pay for it, and presenting another eleven uh, with the crush effect of discarding two cards at random. 
Yeah, and this is tough because he's actually got the mirror guy follow up here now, but now he's going to be forced to block with it. And the other two burn them all. So these are some of his win conditions in this matchup that uh, just to prevent him from discarding and taking this damage for no reason, he's going to have to give all three of those cards. He will be able to play out a passing rush here. Uh, I wonder if he'll commit the time snap potion to just to swing the Vincerakai, but that takes away one of your really big outs in the end game of uh, playing into this ghostly touch kind of thing, right? So, yeah, no, it looks like he'll just play out the passing mirage, uh, conserve the time snap for a future time, and, you know, force Thomas to choose, like, do I want to pop the Serakai, do I want to pop the passing mirage? And I think I see, is that Terra Sunder? Terra Sunder will be pitched. Uh, seismic Surge being created, Anathos coming in for six towards the uh, passing mirage, so going quickly, taking care of business on the Spectra Aura. Yeah, I think that every Guardian player that played in the era of Prism just has, you know, this tunnel vision. They see the passing mirage, they see one of these blue Spectra auras come out. It's like, I'm killing that thing right now before it comes back to bite me. Absolutely. Uh, Jody with the Rake the Embers red creating... It looks like he's created two ash in the process, up to three. He's contemplating how many ash wings he'll generate with that and pull some, pull some ash wings out of his breath pocket. Yeah, right next to that little lapel yeah. mic. Yeah, he's got, yeah, he's, he's got all the Marvel dragons, uh, but no Marvel ash uh, just pocketed away there, it seems. Uh, Jody does, it looks like he's got a, an E-Pot, a Chromai, and one other dragon. Nope, just those two. And getting the first uh, Ashwing pop, not the end of the world. Uh, unfortunate that, you know, without the flame scale Furnace at this point in the game, Jody's not able to generate additional Ash on each of these turns where he does have the extra cards. Uh, that being said, you know, it's not like he took a, a ton of damage to get to that point with the extra cards. Uh, now this is tricky, though. This is seven dominated Anathos with the Terra Sunder coming in first. Uh, seven dominate on hit, uh, discard two cards. Uh, just more disruption coming from Bravo. He is going face. He's letting the Vincerakai stick around. Yeah, I think Thomas has the good read on Jody that, you know, Jody's not going to mindlessly attack with some of these, uh, uh, with some of these uh, Phantasm Dragons and, mm -hmm. you know, get himself into kind of a, a tough situation, uh, losing value to Poppers. Um, but, you know, with that territory, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it looks like Jody's going to be forced here to just discard two cards. Yep, and he's got uh, he's got the Mirror Guy and uh, Yendurai in hand, as well as that E-Pot. Uh, to think about losing. And the E-Pot and I believe that was the Mirror Guy is what he chooses. Yeah, it's Coleman draws up. Yep, go ahead. I was going to say, it's interesting he values that uh, Yandura higher than the uh, uh, Mirror Guy in that spot. Um, but I guess that oh, it's, it, it can be tricky. Yeah, he's got that uh, uh, the, to deal with. Uh, he has that Chromai in, uh, in Arsenal, perhaps valuing that extra action point uh, as, as much given uh, given the circumstance here. He uses that action point on the Ashwing, and Coleman pops pops both of them. The, the Chromai and the Ashwing go uh, go see you later, and Jody Arsenal's Anathos coming in. Is that for four, I believe? That was a lunging press. I don't know if we guys just snuck that into the pitch zone. Yeah, and they're clearing out the Vincerakai, uh, knowing that he doesn't have that threatening of a hand after popping two dragons. Uh, Jody, probably a little bit sad having that Vincerakai out on the board for quite a while, and uh, finally just eating a hammer swing with that. And uh, the this might be part of the reason, actually, that he did choose to... Uh, discard that mirror guy is he's got the remembrance in hand right now that he you know maybe knew he was going to draw into at some point it's like he's about to activate the mage master boots uh so yandurai coming in <clears throat> i believe as an instant here and an ash being created as part of the cost and passing mirage uh then being played here 
Yeah, so now this uh, Yendurai is going to be able to chip in for three and uh, not have Phantasm. I think is that was the Mage Masters actually used on the passing Mirage? Is that what I what I saw there? So that he could attack with the Yendurai? Yeah, I believe that's the the case. It uh, you know it equates yeah. to being able to play two actions there, and then with that extra card in hand that he's sort of holding back. Uh, actually was the remembrance so thomas not able to get the full read on the hand um until uh taking the chip damage yep, and uh remembrance being played and jody is going to get a chrome Eye, a passing mirage and an asvali uh as part of the deal here he'll shuffle those back in banishing the remembrance uh and he does a, he's got a bit of a board state now yeah probably feeling a lot better with where uh the game is at for him than he did before uh, just being able to eat up attacks with another uh, passing mirage here and keep uh, Yender Eye on the board through that would be really, really relevant for him. Surge pops. That being I think said, a... uh, maybe, yeah, I, <laughs> maybe that Ooh. won't matter if uh, this <laughs> next attack goes face anyways. And he, has, he sees the opportunity to dominate, uh, dominate the attack and chooses to do so. The red crush the week coming in for for eight seven seven dominated yeah seven dominated and i guess this is kind of an indication yeah, that all right yep. there's a pummel but it might also not be because <laughs> you know it does seem kind of hard to read what uh, thomas is uh playing into on this sequence because jody only attacked with the one like no phantasm dragon the previous turn uh, Thomas in a you know he's he's used all his his zealous meltings most of his rouse the ancients his ability to go wide and there's the pummel that looks like a blue pummel uh, he'll yeah, buff it to nine uh, so avoid or no maybe he won't avoid the crush effect I don't think he cares about the crush effect if we're being honest he he'll discard a card here um yeah, I think the card that cares about that particular crush effect was the sweeping blow that was used to block there, actually. But uh, Jody's just going to play more dragons. That's why we play Dromai, because we like dragons. Yeah, even Jody is at eight, but he now has two dragons in a passing mirage. His board state is being established. Thomas is uh, using an imposing visage uh, to block for three, even though his life total is high. If you don't stay disciplined on the clear board punch face strategy, uh, it, it can very quickly get out of hand uh, against Dromai uh, with all those dragons uh, be surfacing. So yeah, I think it is, it is very important for him to get get these things off the board and you saw him pop uh Yendurai, and you see him now just target that passing mirage as we've seen before uh still leaving the Yendurai, the second year Yendurai, uh out there uh so jody does have that opportunity now to you know he, he's gonna claw back here dragons generating that board state yeah and i do think that uh um on Jody's side of the board, if he wasn't so low on life total, he might not attack with the second Yendurai and let it get popped. But at that point, he is also trying to make sure that, you know, Bravo can't dominate an attack for guaranteed lethal uh, at kind of this critical juncture. And uh, Coleman, <laughs> there is there is a pummel in in Tom's hand. Uh, so we do see on his turn the seismic surge being generated, the command and conquer coming in for six. Jody is going, please don't have the pummel. Just whatever you do, don't have the pummel. And uh, we'll see We'll see how many cards he commits here. Yeah, do we know if it's a red pummel there? Uh, Couldn't get a quite, quite a good look at it. I've seen, we know we've seen two. Uh, one used on turn zero and one more being used uh, uh, earlier in the game. We saw a blue pummel uh, be used most recently. Yeah, I wonder how, how much Jody wants to give, you know, three cards to the CNC and just say, listen, if it's a blue pummel, I guess that's fine, but just please don't red pummel me here. Uh, so I, I can't recall if it was before or after that, that a remembrance that brought the uh, 
brought the crippling Command and Conquer and the blue back in there, but he did pitch a, it was a blue pummel, another card followed by another blue pummel, uh, did, did Thomas Coleman. So they are uh, potentially still in there, and if, if, uh, if he has not shuffled yet, the likelihood that this is a red pummel in his hand is pretty high. Jody just thinking about the block here. Maybe we'll just give six and uh, lose two cards when the pummel comes over the top because he uh, can't really afford to play around it with what's in his hand. And that is, that is a, re is that a red pummel? Yes, it is. Yeah, I believe that is the red pummel. Jody. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jody wondering what he did wrong uh, in his in his life to get to this point. Uh, Thomas Coleman is at 28 life. Jody is at four. It is uh, you know it is an impressive showing by Bravo and Tom Coleman uh, here against against the drill mine and a very impressive player in Jody Bernie. And I think like that might be the last passing mirage in the deck, so it's going to be quite tricky uh, at this point for uh, you know for Jody to set something up with this uh, ghostly touch that he's been developing counters on, you know, and, and even at this point in the game, he probably hasn't developed the number of counters that he would like to be able to be threatening. Uh, it's looking very, very tough for Jody to climb out of this. Uh, speaking of tough to climb out of, we see the pitch for the seismic surge, the activation of the Bravo ability and a choke slam coming in for eight dominate. And Jody's showing all the cards that he can't use to block. And that is going to do it for the game. Tom Coleman taking it over Jody Bernie in round five of the Battle Harden. 28 to nothing. An yeah. impressive showing there. And that's the kind of beatdown that I think uh, the Dromai players are not uh, happy to see. And part of the reason why I think that, you know, Bravo is considered not the easiest matchup for uh, Dromai right now. Yeah, in uh, uh, Tom showing exceptional uh, piloting skills there. Uh, shout out to T and uh, and shout out to Jody. Who we got clout chasing. We got uh, we got tavern brawlers, and we've got off the rails TCG, which is my YouTube channel. Be sure to go uh, go there at off the rails TCG. Find me on Twitter at uh, off the rails TCG as well. And uh, Frank, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me uh, at the lazy dog on. Twitter and YouTube. So thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next round. All right. See you later, guys. And now a word from our round six sponsor. From alpha to now, Fab Unsealed is the best online flesh and blood box opening experience. From breaks to wars to special events and slabs, Chris and Ian have turned ripping boxes, cracking packs, and searching for spice into a live stream celebration. Join their Patreon for special deals, including $5 off every slot you buy, and follow them on Facebook, YouTube, and whatnot to get in on the action and be the star of the show. That's Fab Unsealed. Box breaks, box wars, boom. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Again, back in round six. Uh, this is Nathan Crawford and Joshua Lau from the Card Guys. We got Pat Edsby playing Oldham versus Matthew M playing Lexi. What do you think, Josh? Uh, this is a this is a uh, matchup that has changed quite considerably uh, from the last uh, set. Lexi used to be a huge underdog into Oldham, um, but a lot of the tools that were designed for Azalea. Well, guess what? Lexi can use them pretty damn <laughs> well as well. That's um, right. We're, I, I think we're really going to have to see what style of Oldham comes out and the level of disruption because disrupting Lexi is very critical to preventing so those large 20, 30 Bravo damage Bravo turns Bravo. with three of a kind ring razors, you know, extra reloads from bolt and shot and stuff like that uh, mm -hmm. and the gloves. So we're going to have to see how that how that goes here. Um, both players are 5-0, and oh, so this is, they're pretty much locked for top 8 here, uh, but they are playing for seeding here. Um, let's see how this goes. All right, so straight off the rip for the equipment, we do have the Abyssal Quiver. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. just acts as a 
on board free remembrance if you will uh other than that everything looks pretty standard uh also if you notice in round three we covered charles dunn i think pat is on the same team as charles and they're probably uh testing partners so they're more than likely going to be running a very similar kind of mid-rangey oldham deck Mm -hmm. um but looking at pat's hand i mean we got three reds including a pulverize and a rouse so you got a couple options here you got do you throw the rouse and or do you heave the uh pulverize <laughs> well, the the problem with heaving the pulverize is like you you lexi can load on your turn yes. so um that's one thing that you have to be very cognizant mm -hmm. of yeah so I, another thing i think we're gonna have to look out for the style of Lexi. Um, so there are two predominant styles nowadays. There's the more ice heavy one, and there's the more generic heavy one with, you know, a couple of Arctic incarcerations with uh, a few um, chilling ice fiends. So we'll, we'll see which uh, type of list he's on. Um, but from uh, Pat's side, does, does how you approach the matchup change drastically based on which uh, Lexi you're playing against? No, I think you just, I think it's absolutely wrong to just straight like fatigue and like that's your plan. Mm -hmm. um, I think because Lexi can just set up like a double rain razor three of a kind and just really like do a lot of damage. So I think you just have to just play the value game. Really, I've been playing this matchup a lot and I've noticed that a lot of it comes down to like just knowing when to respect Bolton shots, when not to, and like knowing the curve of voltaire and like how many cards that they have left and like mm -hmm. just kind of managing that information and then presenting disruption when the window it, don't don't force it right don't mm -hmm. don't take 12 damage to throw a cnc you know it might not be worth it right yeah. so um it's just evaluating those points from turn to turn it does make it difficult i will admit um it it's, it's a very tough matchup to play on the defense so drill shot is a card that um i mean drill shot without an aim counter is just uh you know a, a one for five card right like uh it's a zero for four zero for four okay yeah so i get i guess the lexi's uh arrow curve is predominantly zero for fours um right that way they yeah. can utilize the double reload and they don't need a blue every turn well, the, the cost curve is basically you pitch a blue, mm -hmm. you load, you you fire one one cost arrow and one zero cost arrow, so you mm -hmm. can fit you can pay the, the double tax on Voltaire, mm -hmm. and then you pay for the one cost arrow, so you mm -hmm. get to fire two arrows on three card mm -hmm. hand, and then and then of course you have any like pumps and shenanigans between mm -hmm. that, whether it be codex or whatever the case may be. Yep. Um, but that's kind of how the curve operates. But man, this is something that Lexi never wants to see that mm -hmm. that CNC. Yep, Falcon Wing, uh, a new card as well. The one uh, that's uh, zero for three go again. Pretty, pretty uh, good card. I mean, with Voltaire, it basically becomes a zero for four, just like the other arrows. Um, so yeah, I think what you said about respecting Bolton shot at the correct times is really important um, because you're going to get some information before a Bolton shot comes your way. Like before you have to block it, right? You'll get some right. information on their pitch. You got some information on their, uh, maybe if they've activated Lexi or not, right? And uh, just the deck composition as well. So this this list from Matt does look uh, fuseless or less ice he uh, heavy. So yeah, um, I, th I, th I think I think the Lexis have went that mm -hmm. direction to f to help gain a little bit of edge into decks like guardian and, yep. and things like that because you know chilling ice vein doesn't really matter when you uh you know when they're blocking up the damage more mm -hmm. than half the time anyway and then also when you talk about fuse cards and things like that you do create inconsistencies so the mm -hmm. fuseless lit you know you can a heat if it like the card in his pitch zone heat seeker if that hits you know there's going to be something of value mm -hmm. that lands in that arsenal every yep. single time instead of it being like a winner's mm -hmm. grasp or something <laughs> what card do you think uh he's going to get with codex here yeah uh probably drill, drill shot if i had to guess um because it could just be fired it threatens the the rampart just like he grabbed mm -hmm. um because it has it, yeah until they get the rampart they're basically just always going to be pressuring with um Mm -hmm. with with drill shot is, is typically how that works 
So the uh, Lexi did give uh, Ultim the ability to CNC him next turn. So uh, kind of a double-edged sword, although uh, I think most people would agree that Codex of Frailty is extremely strong, even if it allows your opponent to play six copies of CNC against you. CNC for five. Yeah, but it doesn't feel good here. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, <laughs> five even is, the, against I mean, Lexi, five <laughs> is basically six. <laughs> four and five and six are basically the same thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess you know they also have to run Snapdragons in this matchup as well, so they don't even have the Reese Rider boots for any buffer here. No reactions. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yep. So looks like he's just gonna let it hit. And goodbye to Codex. He's like, That's two. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was like, you know what? The first one didn't really do. <laughs> it caused me some headaches. So I don't need this either. <laughs> yeah. And All right. you know, I I think it's your point about red and yellow Bolton shot being like really important. Because yeah. that's how you fire three arrows at a turn, right? Because Lexi cannot fire three arrows normally, unless literally it's like they are Arsenal to Falcon Wing, or they burn their snaps, or they have Bolton shot, right? And right. obviously the Bolton shot is the most common way that they're going to throw three arrows at you. And if, if they're only throwing two arrows at you, like you can, I mean, some of the arrows have auto hit effects. Some of them are just damage, so you can kind of just block block and then you could still send something back at them whether it's disruption or you know a very efficient attack absolutely and and matt does have a rain razors in hand with another mm -hmm. bolton shot but i would yep. love the discipline play like he's doing right now where he just holds it because mm -hmm. you know you only get four value out of the uh the rain razors if you play yep. it so i really i really do like the the discipline there to uh to hold it back and really yeah have that big push a card that Matt has not seen yeah. yet is Three of a Kind. And yep. when we see Three of a Kind plus Rain Razors together, uh, that is the turn that, you know, we're going to see Pat's life basically uh, probably get cut in half here. Uh, but uh, Rouse the Ancients revealing Chokeslam and Thunderquake. I think we've seen this before in round three. Uh, <laughs> looks like they're buddy buddies. <laughs> and Pat did not block either one of those Bolton shots. So... Mm -hmm. I think he's... He had a good read that, like, that was a setup turn from Matt, I think. <clears throat> you think he's going to take Tunic Counter and choke slam, Or... No box. And then Arsenal, like, the... 28? Yeah, that, I mean, that makes the most sense. I, like, why I would think, you keep I the think extra so, yes. card, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was just yep. trying to figure out why he kept the extra card. Because yep. you definitely don't send the Thunderquake, because then you come off an Arsenal. Yep. Exactly. Take three. Yep. Yeah, choke slam, three. you know, or is one of the uh, best Sorry. attacks that you can, like... Uh, do off of a tunic. Yep. Okay. Um, however, the blue one is uh, doesn't quite get there. Like the red one basically demands two cards. The blue one basically you could just block uh, with a three block and move on with your life. Yeah. And uh, yep. So we saw a fatigue shot get blocked with there. Um. So so another thing I'm noticing is that a uh, codex of inertia. Is this a uh, pretty common card these days in the Lexi list? I wouldn't call it a staple. It's something that some players are experimenting with. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, there are some decks in the format that can get hard punished by placing just a random card from the top of their deck and their arsenal. Um, so maybe you do gain an edge in that fashion. Um, I can't... I'm not sold on it, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know... Um, I'm not a, a real big ranger player either, so that, that could have a lot to do with it. <laughs> Ooh, a big staunch coming out here. Um, so this looks like it's just going to be a... Yeah, I'll go to end. Probably no ice react here. He's just going to get to Arsenal again here. I think if he had an ice card, he might have ice reacted that. But, uh, I, I'm actually not... I mean, unless he has like a spinal or something lined up, like respecting the rain rate. Okay, and that's worth it, 100%. Yeah. Endless winner here. I like. I, I think we've joked several times that Endless Winter basically says uh, lose two minutes on the round timer. <laughs> right, because everybody's got to read it. Like, uh, this but isn't even really good fused, against Lexi. Yeah. It's, it's, well, even the on hit, like yeah. every time you activate Voltaire, it yep. costs you two resources. Yeah. Um, but 
it's possible that uh, Matt's hand is for her insulated against uh, Endless Winter uh, if he has enough blues. Uh, looks like uh, Winter's Bite gonna be the Blue Winter's Bite gonna be the uh, starter here. Um, he and did, not having he a did tunic forget is kind the of trigger. Annoying. He did forget the trigger though. He flipped it with Lexi. I'm assuming and. Um, Mm, did he? There's no, uh, there's no frostbite on the other side, so I. Don't well, think I, that's what I'm saying. I, he might have, he might have forgotten the trigger, which is super relevant against Oldham because if he wants to crown or, well, I guess he's off an arsenal, so. It, but a D react, it could cost him on a D react or something if he has another staunch. But he would get a frostbite himself if he activated Lexi. That's the issue. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, that ma that makes a lot of sense because so, this winter. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't, I don't think Matt wanted. I, I think he ha he has his turn planned out perfectly here. Makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. So infecting shot, another new card here. Um, a pretty annoying card because it's basically one for five or seven. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most uh, efficient uh, arrows in the game, and uh, yeah. Go again, Speaking of efficient oh, arrows, endless. there's another efficient arrow there. And with rain raises, this is coming in for six here, so we may see some equipment. Pat's got one here. card in hand, so this oh, is a nope. very this tough This is going to hit. Yep. So this could be a snap into endless. Well, no, it, he's definitely going to give the boots and, and create a uh, block for six. Card. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. So, so he, he had the one block. floating. Yep. All good there. So a pretty big turn from Matt, you know, handled relatively well by pat i would say absolutely he did come off an arsenal though uh but so did matt so it's uh yep. kind of back to uh back to the uh grind here and voltaire activation bolt, bolt shot coming out for five and this is one of those turns where like pat would pat needs to think about this carefully like without a five or six card hand as lexi does this bolts and shot actually matter much? Right. Not really. I don't and think it, it does. And he agrees. And this is, uh, you know, analyzing the threat level of your opponent's turn is like the core to, under to you know, improving at this game. And that was a great no block there from Pat. Fatigue shot. This one is fairly relevant if he actually wants to send something over. But, you know... The issue is that, like, if you block with two cards, can you really send anything relevant over anyways? Right. Um, I think and... It's probably just a stabilized play, unless he mm -hmm. really wants to make a move. But, like, you could block two hammer and then get your arsenal back. But All right, he um, took it. He, he's, and... he's doing it. Okay, so... Counter on tunic. I mean... Yeah. It Paris doesn't Paris. affect the weapon, which is a thing. Right. right. This is for five here, so this is basically saying, you know... Give me New Horizons, or I get Tempo here. Also, I um, think the last card in Pat's hand is Arouse the Ancients, which is, if he could have played it, actually plays around Fatigue Shot, because the text on Fatigue Shot says the, the base, base is ha yeah. halved, and half of zero is, guess what, still It's zero. still zero, yep. I knew, you know, fourth grade math was going to be relevant one day. One day. <laughs> one day. Uh, so again, we're seeing you know great value from Terra Sunder here. Um, Matt gonna take two here, gonna lose two cards, gonna be basically down to uh, a one card hand here. And uh, you know, Pat gained a lot of tempo there, although it did cost him you know a decent amount of life. Looks like Ooh, okay, Pat. Matt just gonna arsenal pass uh oh this hand is uh not what you want to be doing for on offense here definitely That's a piece not. That of mind great... sink below <laughs> and i can't see the second card there oasis uh oh <laughs> well, well Rouse, Rouse is not happening i can promise you that that Rouse head shake happen. there from pat uh oh he you have to crown here. Just you have to crown on your own turn here. Yeah, yeah. you have to look for something. You got to pitch the peace of mind or yeah. or oasis Can and, you, and crown here. I mean, worst case scenario, you could play peace of mind on your own yeah. turn to ensure a arsenal as well. So, all right, glacial okay. footstep or glacial glacial. Uh, 
It did get it? any better. Yeah, it's still uh, just a hammer. It's still just a hammer. Uh, yeah. I guess you could tunic counter dump the hand, but that doesn't, yeah, seem, that doesn't seem worth Matt here giving him like a a look like really? That's your turn? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Matt was like, thank uh, you. And, and and that's super unfortunate because if if if, if Pat had a, a choke slam, a spinal, anything drawn there, this is a whole different game. Pat. Yep. This is a whole different game because Matt would not be able, you know, he's got high value targets in Arsenal. He's got the rain razors. He's got three of a kind in hand. Um, there's just so many. I think that's three of a kind anyway. Um, let's see. We got an infecting shot. We have a Falcon wing, which he's going to block with. Okay. So maybe it's not that big of a hand or he has too many. I, I, I see a problem. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's that, a three of a kind. So, so it was too many cards is yeah. the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Three of a kind yeah. with rain razors. This is the strongest uh, setup you could have as Lexi, especially considering Bull he still has bulls, eye bracers, and snapdragons, and tunic on three. Go again. This turn's gonna hurt. Go yep. Uh, I think Pat's coming to the realization that this is just taking a turn. Definitely for the worst. Yeah, um, if, if you had disruption on a Rain Razor's three of a kind turn, completely different game here. Well, yeah, you just you just win because you, well, you, you might not win the game, but like you're at least you're he's going to block with everything but three of a kind, right? And he's just going to pass turn again like he did. Mm -hmm. Then you might just have the disruption again, and he's just going to be leaking damage, and he might not have the life threshold to actually execute the three sure. of a kind rain razor. So, yeah. that one misstep by Pat—not yep. that it was his fault—but you know, mm -hmm. just drawing all those defensive reds yep. uh, might have just cost him the match. Yep, and we're gonna see a arrow into snaps into. Actually, I don't. Yeah, probably bullseye bracers would be yeah, another arrow. Yeah, This is gonna be 100%. a four arrow turn here. The bread and butter of uh, Lexi here on full display. Um, and from Matt's point of view, like he doesn't really care which four arrows he's chucks at Pat. Right? He's just right. like here, just have twenty four damage, and maybe some odd hit effects. Um, Pat, I mean. He does have double sync blow here, so he's able to like kind of sculpt a decent blocking hand. He does have like effectively five cards to block, which is what you want on a burst turn. So that is uh that is good. Um so I guess what what do you think's Pat going through Pat's uh mind right now? Uh, he, to be honest, he, as he's he's probably thinking, is that card in hand endless arrow? And unfortunately, He's mm -hmm. not going to be privy to that information until that infecting shot has dealt its damage or not. So, mm -hmm. and if it's an endless arrow, then that's just the worst is, spot to be in. Is right? that a piece of mind in his hand? It is a piece so of that, mind. So that's going to have to get out of there with the right. sink below, right? So, um, well, you yeah. could. I mean, it's you can still pitch it and block with shield. Like it's still efficient, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's it's not an ideal spot. By any means. I mean, how how bad is it if it's uh, endless arrow here? Because it looks like he already has two arrows and he only has. Uh, I mean, he has an arrow in arsenal and he has bullseye bracers to reload an arrow. So well, yeah, what's I mean, I mean, what's going to happen is he's going to fire the infecting shot, snap it, and then use bullseye bracers to load the arrow in his hand. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is he goes back to having an arsenal back to back if, if that's it uh endless it, yep. yeah yeah and, and i think pat's just trying to evaluate that because that is probably uh, the worst scenario but then again you you know there's just so many possibilities but i would say endless arrow is probably the worst case scenario there matt has been looking at pat for like <laughs> the last 20 30 seconds he's like you're gonna do anything bro <laughs> like come on <laughs> <laughs> I just, just, just uh, blocking rampart. Just blocking rampart here. I, I mean, bullseye bracers is a action, right? So it's possible he gets Correct. value out of this. Um, yep. So that's so this does leave him the ability to peace of mind here as well. So it looks like he's gonna go for that. Okay. Yeah. 
pretty good here. Are we going to see a snap into bullseye? Looks like yeah. no. Uh, he said no. That that was really good from Pat. Wow. Yep. Okay. Well played. Well yeah, played. well played. I mean, I mean that's a... Uh, that was a great defensive turn there from Pat. Uh, equally good offensive turn from Matt. Um, but if he if he was able to you know snap into bullseye into the one more arrow there, that would have uh, cut Pat's life down to probably like five or so. Um, well, it looks like we're gonna start with lightning surge here, lace with blood rot into a. Uh, sedation shot. S sedation shot, yep. 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 And this was coming in for nine because he can do plus one because he gets the go again from flipping mm -hmm. the lightning card on legacy ability. So nine with very, very relevant on hit effects, including the blood rot pox and the inertia token and to clear that cl crown you know, usage. Yep. This is this is where Daddy. we sometimes see Ultim kind of struggle is when... Um, like they do have a decent amount of two blocks in their deck, and they have cards like Staunch and mm -hmm. Blue Staunch, Blue Unmovable. So it does create some weird situations where they can block Ooh. six decently, but they might have trouble blocking nine. Uh, looks like he's just going to throw down nine here, and I, I mean, that's two Spinal Crush though. <laughs> that is two Spinal Crushes and a uh, Glacial Footsteps there. So, I mean this. Blue staunch here, looking pretty bad here. Looks like Pat just yep. took the lightning surge. I think there's a good shot that he could just tune it crown mm -hmm. and hope to draw a card he can just block with uh, yep. to help preserve some life, or he could just hammer if he really likes yep. the arsenal. And yeah, we're we're basically seeing uh, an immovable here. You know, create a very very awkward situation here. Or a oh, staunch response. Yep. Oh, endless winner. Yep. Good, good card here. Um, minus two minutes on the round clock doesn't matter. They have plenty of time here. They've both been playing excellent. Uh, fab here. Uh, so what do you what do you think here? Is this um, a block and kind of setup turn from from Matt? Um, he does have two heat seekers. Um, it really just comes down to the blue count. What is mm -hmm. the blue count? If the blue count's low, you block two cards. Mm -hmm. um, you arsenal, or it might even block three cards, and then just arsenal your highest value target. Um, if you have a blue and an arrow, and you because Odom is off an arsenal right now, so you, it's very tempting to just throw like one arrow for six. You know, if you have like a one cost arrow, you just pull tear it and fire it, and then. Um, block with two cards and that would allow you to maintain some type of tempo but then you come off of an arsenal mm -hmm. um but you really don't want but then again pat blocked with two spinal crushes and played one earlier so he's out of those he's played a choke slam um maybe there's not that many actual relevant threats left in the deck and you can analyze that appropriately yep i think matt is likely to give him three cards here just arsenal pass um Blocking with two cards doesn't really do anything, right? Um, it only Unless allows like, him to pitch a blue and fire a one cost arrow. Is yeah. all it would do, which could, has value. It, I mean, it is valid. Um, it just depends on what he thinks is best as a player, right? and so he is going to take the line to to Arsenal, yep. just the highest value target, and that's okay. Yep. Go to pass. Gain and a third Pedro of a resource. CNC. Oh yep. man, he drew a uh -oh. CNC. But does he have a way to ensure that it hits? So not only can he CNC, but he can actually CNC and then heave the pulverize. Pretty which good. Is risky. It's super very, risky. That's, like, you risky. can't crowd it away. Like I don't think there's any way that you can do that with three lives. Um, yeah, because especially oh, yeah. considering you he took it, now. there's you no way. Can now. Yeah, there's, there's no, no way you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I was gonna say if if he had like a two block and he like gave you three cards and like yeah you do it but like no if he ate it you just you just arsenal remorseless a excellent card here um, this plus red of the ledger probably the best arrows in the well red of the ledger is in a, is a specialization so. Remorseless is uh, one of the best, uh, yep. you know, follow-up or next-tier arrows. Um, 
It says you can't play D Rex from uh, from Arsenal. And if it hits, whenever they play an action card, they lose a life, which basically turns this into a one for six. It's it's also important to note that we're on the text on Ramosa says when it is put into your arsenal face up. Mm-hmm. You don't have to fire it to get the defense reaction effect. You just have to place it face up in your arsenal, whether it be via flip, via Voltaire, whatever the case may be. Uh, so you can actually just flip it up, leave it last, and you still get that that, that long effect. Go to reactions. Right. Yep. They could play D-reacts, you know, in the middle of the combat chain, but then they couldn't play it on right Morseless at the end. Here. Looks like Raid Razor's uh, here. Going to come into direct conflict with the uh, that blue yeah, autumn's touch covered, and, and i think he's gonna yeah, you know block seven on seven there here comes a searing shot an old school card i think that's from the uh original arcane rising right mm-hmm. yeah it might be a crew it, it may be crew i'm not but it, ha- it has one of the... Oh, looks like he has no not enough block there. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, hard to find all. Getting him killed there. Uh, yep. Well played there to Matt. Uh, taking it down. Going 6-0 now as Lexi. Um, yeah, well played. I, I think they both played pretty well there. Um, yeah. I, th- I, think that Matt, I think that match literally came down to... Because Matt ended at 8 life. Mm-hmm. And I think the match literally came down to when Pat drew, um, not taking anything cards. away. Yeah, yeah three. He, he presented four damage on a five card hand, and that's yeah. probably not where you want to be. And yeah. if he drew, it would just be such a different game. Not saying Pat would win. I'm just saying it would be a very different game if disruption was drawn on that turn, or just even like a a red glacial for ten. You know, like just anything. Um, it'd be a, 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 a very different game. But yep. both players played it well. They recognized what they needed to, to do. Um, and really glad that it, was, it wasn't like a fatigue fest, right? Like mm-hmm. interaction, good blocks, really good blocking by Pat. Yep. And then um, heads up play by Matt as well. Yep, I agree. Okay, well, that uh, wraps up round six. This has been Josh and Nathan with the card guys. Uh, yep, so that's the end of the uh, line for us. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the tournament. See you guys. Take care, everybody.